Hello, my friends. Welcome to my corner. Do you have a favorite Japanese author? Mine happens to be none other than Yasunari Kawabata. And today I wanted to share with you my Kawabata collection. I have read every book by Kawabata that I could get my hands on. And you may be wondering, so Jorge, what is it about Kawabata that you like so much? Like, why Kawabata? We know there are so many fantastic Japanese authors, right? Mishima, Soseki, Tanisaki, Murakami, so many of them, the list goes on. So why Kawabata? I think ultimately I cannot give you an objective or even a useful answer here. I think this is a very personal thing, you know, it's like a connection that you establish with an author that happens almost at the spiritual level. And for me that connection happened with Kawabata. I love uh, Japanese literature, primarily because of the beautifully understated quality that it has and of course there are exceptions here as always and I think Kawabata exemplifies that in the best possible way I think in his works you can definitely find the deep insight into psychology you can find you know everything about the dark side of the human heart the beauty of the everyday uh, when it comes to objects and even events all of that is present in his work in a wonderful way and that is what I enjoy the most. But as I said before, ultimately it is a very personal thing. So uh, why don't I shut up right now and show you my collection of books by Kawabata. Let's see what we have here. So uh, just so you know, I'm gonna go by chronological order here. That is by order of publication in Japan. So in that case we would have to start with the Dancing Girl of Isu. This is a very nice collection put together by Counterpoint. It has, of course, the title story and several others also. I don't know if you can read, uh, but we have other than the title story. Diary of My Sixteenth Year, which is a very important text for uh, Kawabata. Oil, The Master of Funerals, Gathering Ashes. And then in a second part, it has a bunch of palm of the hand stories. This uh, particular story was also adapted in, a, in an anime film for the animated classics of Japanese literature, which was a very, very nice series that I recommend that you watch if you get the chance to do that, from the early 80s or maybe late 70s, something like that. And they chose to adapt The Dancing Girl of Isu. Then I have The Scarlet Gang of Asakusa, this is marketed as a novel, but I don't think I would call it a novel. It's more like creative nonfiction, little pieces about this, um, you know, this neighborhood. So it's episodic, right? It's like little episodes, little vignettes about this uh, area in, uh, you know, in Japan. And um, it, it's really what in Spanish we call crónica, right? The crónica is like a like a hybrid genre. It's like a mix of uh, fiction and nonfiction. So basically, what we would call creative nonfiction today. This one was published by the University of California Press and it has like copious notes and and, um, and foreword and an afterword by Donald Ritchie also. So it's a very very nice edition. It really has everything you want to know about this particular area and uh, it is really a very enjoyable text. Then we have of course Kawabata's most famous novel, the one that most people begin with and I was no exception. Here. Uh, this was the first text that I ever read by Kawabata and I absolutely fell in love. Even though these days, to be honest, I do not call this one of my favorite texts by Kawabata, but I would still recommend this as a first step if you have not read this author and you want to start exploring his work. It was made into a very, very good movie in 1957. It's a black and white movie by Shiro Toyoda. That is the version that I have seen. But then in 1965 it was remade by Hideo Oba, starring uh, Mariko Okaga. And this was a color film, but I, I have not had access to it. I did like the black and white version very much. It's a very simple story, you know, apparently simple at least, of a man and the geisha. So it's a very good way to, to begin your journey with Kawabata. Next we have the master of Go, about the Go players, right? You have the older player who represents tradition and the younger one who represents the new generation and how things are changing. I would say that this is one of my three favorite texts by 
Kawabata. I am sure there is a film version, but I have not seen it. I will say this, though. In 1984, there was a Swiss film titled Dangerous Moves. That was the title it had in English, at least. It won the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film, and it was about chess, right? And I think the story is very similar to what Kawabata presents in The Master of Go. So it's very nice to watch that movie and compare it to this text right here. Then we have Thousand Cranes. As you can see, I really like to match my books whenever I can do that. All of these, the Snow Country, the Master of Go, Thousand Cranes, and the next one that I'm going to show you, and there's another one later on too, were published by Vintage. The, they have changed the covers now, but I really like these. And every time I can, whenever I can, I match my books. I should show you my uh, collection of Borges. You, you'll see what I mean if I show you that one. This is a very interesting novel because it's very short, very brief, but very deep. It, it goes really deep into the psychology of the characters. And the basic story here is that a guy meets his father's mistress, right? His father is dead. And uh, he continues to have this relationship with his mistress. And this novel is written around the ceremony of tea, right? So uh, very, very interesting, very, very insightful story. It is also one of my favorites by Kawabata. But even more than that one, I liked this one, The Sound of the Mountain. This is also, uh, it has also been adapted into, uh, into film. In 1954, it was made by Mikio Naruse, so you can imagine what that film is like. And it also stars Setsuko Hara, so it's really something. I really like the movie and, of course, the text. I think if I had to choose one text by Kawabata, if you asked me, okay, which is your absolute favorite, I would totally say The Sound of the Mountain. And the main idea here, the main conflict or the main relationship that the novel explores is the relationship between a young woman and her father-in-law. So very, very interesting uh, situation here with The Sound of the Mountain. Then I have The Lake, probably the most underrated book by Kawabata. I have never heard anybody tell me anything about this book. And to be perfectly honest with you, if I had to choose one book by Kawabata to reread, like immediately, it would be this one, because honestly, I do not remember what it's about. I have no recollection of it, other than that I really, really enjoyed it, and I thought, wow, why is this novel not better known, right? I have no idea, but uh, I will reread it one of these days because I really want to remember the story and have that experience again. This is published by Kodansha. Another one by Counterpoint, like The Dancing Girl of Isu, you'll recognize the, the type of cover, the artwork and, and all that, is this collection of stories, First Snow on Fuji. It has many stories here. Um, and uh, let's see if we can find the... Yeah, so it has this country, that country, a row of trees, nature, raindrops, chrysanthemum and the rock, first snow on Fuji, silence, her husband didn't, Yumura and the boat women, which is actually a dramatic piece. So you have a collection here that also gives you an idea of what Kawabata was like as a playwright, if you will. I really like this one. This is another book that not many people read and not many people mention when it comes to Kawabata's work. Next, there's a classic here, The House of the Sleeping Beauties, made into film many times. I believe there's a German adaptation to film of this famous story, also published by Kodansha. And it has two more stories. Let me see if I can... There we go. It has House of Sleeping Beauties, one arm, and of birds and beasts. All of them very good stories, but of course the title story is the most well-known and, and probably the most powerful. I managed to get a hardcover copy of The Old Capital. The original title of this is Kyoto, right? So it's it's a very, very good novel. Also uh, a novel that not many people mention. It's a story of twins, right? So you have a, a very interesting story right there. It was made into a movie in 1963 by Noboru Nakamura. And actually, this movie was nominated by, for an Academy Award, but it never received uh, you know, the, the prize. But it was one of the finalists, let's call it that, for the Academy Award that year in 1963. I really like this novel too, even though I would not consider it 
one of my favorites. It's really a very enjoyable read and I would like to share my views on this particular book with you in the future in, in one of those book reviews that I do every now and then. Another absolute favorite of mine, Beauty and Sadness, also made into a movie. Okay, this one was actually made by Masahiro Shinoda, so perfect uh, director to adapt Kawabata. The movie is from 1965 and it stars Mariko Kaga, like the 1965 version of Snow Country. This is a very complex uh, story the, about entanglements, I would say, if I had to describe it. right? It's about a man who has an affair with a woman. He becomes a writer, she becomes a painter, and they meet again uh, at some point in life later on. And the painter, she is having uh, an affair with a younger girl, and the entanglements here are, are just amazing, the way the story develops. And the movie is really, really good. I recommend it if you can get a copy of it. This is also, as I said, one of my favorite novels by Kawabata. So I guess if I had to tell you like three novels that I really, really liked, I would say The Sound of the Mountain, uh, The Master of Go, and Beauty and Sadness. Those are the top three for me. Then I have this great collection of palm of the hand stories. As you may know, there are many, many of them. But um, the, this one brings the most important ones, I guess, or it gives you an idea what type of stories we are talking about. They are basically short shorts. They are poetic stories. This is really sometimes, a, you know, it, 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 it's really right there in the line between poetry and prose. So not so much, you don't read them so much for plot as for the whole, like, you know, atmosphere, uh, images, symbols and all those things. Kawabata is great at giving the everyday objects a power that, that you have probably never experienced in, in most authors that you read. So uh, Palm of the Hand Stories is another good place to begin with Kawabata, even though you know he also wrote longer novels that are much more complex than the stories presented here. I wanted to show you also some books in Spanish by Kawabata that I have. This is simply the Spanish version of Thousand Cranes. So it was published by um, Austral, which is a very famous publishing house in Spanish. And believe it or not, Kawabata re reads very well in Spanish too. I love his work in English. I wish I could experience it in the original language, but I do not. I, I cannot read Japanese. But even in this like Spanish versions, I really liked uh, his work also, and it is a great source of inspiration for me as a writer, too. And perhaps more important than this one, I have by the same publisher something that is not available in English, which is his correspondence with Yukio Mishima. And as you can see, it covers many years, from 1945 to 1970. So you have everything here, all of their exchanges. It's very, very nice to have that. They would send each other you know, their work, of course, and they would comment on what they thought, you know, I just read your novel, and um, I, I remember one of the letters Kawabata wrote to um, Mishima saying that he had just seen the movie adaptation of Beauty and Sadness, and he mentioned Mariko Kaga, he says, it's a movie starring Mariko Kaga, and I wonder, is this really the type of girl that I write about? Very interesting reactions to uh, their own work, even. So I really enjoyed reading this correspondence between these two giants of Japanese literature. And I have another book in Spanish by Kawabata that I wanted to show you, which is this one. It's, uh, of course, An Arm, right, which is already included in that other collection that I showed you, House of the Sleeping Beauties. But this also has stories that I was not able to get in, uh, of course, it indexes in the back, of course, because it's a Spanish book. Um, other stories that I was not able to get in, in English, right? So um, many of them, and I'm not sure how the titles, they, they give us the title here in, in Japanese also, but as I said, these are just not available in the English editions of the Palm of the Hand stories. There is only one more book by Kawabata that I would like to get, and it's the Spanish collection of Palm of the Hand uh, stories, because I am sure that there are many there maybe even most of them, that are not included in the English version. 
And then I told you that I have, I think I told you that I have every single book that Kawabata ever published, but that is not entirely true. There is one book that I do not have, uh, which I'm going to show you um, in a second. And you're wondering, so Jorge, you don't have it, so how are you going to show it to me? Well, here it is. This is from the library. This is Dandelions. As you may know, the novel that Kawabata left unfinished uh, at the time of his death. And I usually do not read works that are unfinished. I have made exceptions in some cases, uh, like, um, let's see if I can remember, Hemingway's The Garden of Eden, I read that and I recommend it. Then uh, Dostoevsky's Nietoshka Nyeshvanova, so I read that too and I really, really enjoyed it. And then of course I had to make an exception with Kawabata. I uh, really enjoyed reading this. I don't think there was a lot more, you know, that, that was left to write. We have 118 pages of this novel, precisely. And as you know, Kawabata did not write very, very long novels, so I, I'm pretty sure we have more than half of this. And that's all I'm going to say right now, because I would also like to share my ideas on this unfinished novel in a separate video with you. So that is the end of the journey here. Those are the books that I have by Yasunari Kawabata. I hope you enjoyed the journey through his works. So that is my collection of books by Yasunari Kawabata. I hope that you have read all of these books, but even if you haven't, even if you have read a few of them, I hope that this video will inspire you to continue to explore this wonderful author. And if you have not read any of them, let me say this. I would be very, very happy and very honored to be the person who introduced you to Yasunari Kawabata. So please give this author a chance and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day.